Hello there. Welcome to Just the Discs. We talk about Blu-rays here. And today, I am talking about a couple Blu-rays that are coming from MVD uh, Entertainment. And uh, they are two different labels. The first of which is an old favorite of mine, Fun City Editions. Second of which is from Unearth Films. Um, but another sort of old video store favorite of mine as well. Uh, so, Fun City Editions, as folks following along uh, at home know, has moved on from its uh, partnership with OCN and Vinegar Syndrome and is no longer going to be a partner label with them. Uh, there obviously will still be some of the Fun City Editions releases available at the Vinegar Syndrome website, but they are now partnered with MVD for distribution. And as I understand it, their first title with MVD is doing really well, and not surprisingly so, because it is a cult classic from 1995, and it is, of course, Party Girl, uh, starring the wonderful Parker Posey. So here's what the new uh, Fun City Editions version of Party Girl looks like. This is a lovely slip case. And the alternate artwork that I remember from the VHS cover. Very nice. So what is Party Girl? Uh, Party Girl is about a girl named Mary. And she is, as the film title implies, a party girl. Uh, kind of broke, but she still finds ways to sort of have soirees and go to clubs. Uh, but she is arrested at the beginning of the movie for throwing an illegal rave. And she ends up asking her Aunt Judy for um, bail money. And Judy then finds Mary a job at her library so that Mary can repay her for the bail money. Um, initially, Mary kind of balks at this library job, um, finds it sort of boring and stifling and prefers to hang out with a local street vendor and try to get to know him. Uh, however, she ends up sort of refocusing her life um, after some stuff happens. We'll leave it at that. Um, but it is one of the great Parker Posey performances. It's truly a breakout, you know, a, one of those roles you're just like, wow, okay. You have my attention now. I'm love, loving getting to see what you'll do next. And she, this is very early in her career. She had done like Days and Confused and a few other things, but really not broken out. And she just has a way of speaking and a way of being that feels like I think Parker Posey really is, or at least in my head, that's how she is. And obviously she's not just like this person because um, this person can be incredibly selfish and self-absorbed. Uh, I think just the charming side of this character is the side that I think of as, uh, you know, what Parker Posey could be like, but she nails it. She absolutely destroys in this role the <laughs> hello um, signature sort of a little uh, quip that she has in this is one that stands out for all time, really. Um, and yeah, this movie's got a lot of cool influences, which I'll talk about uh, in terms of the director interview that we get. One thing that's really neat is that this film has been kind of lost. Uh, it is one that I don't know if it got an official DVD release or if it did, it was full frame, it was not a good looking transfer. And of course, one of the things we love about Fun City Editions here at Just the Disc is that they really take a lot of time and care with their releases 
and that starts often with the transfer. And in this case, we are talking about a new 4K restoration from its original 16 millimeter camera negative. So this is originally shot on 16, and this is the first time that the 16 millimeter original camera negative has been returned to uh, probably since the film's release. And so folks that have not seen this film, and it's, you know, not been easy to see for a while, uh, will now get to see it in a beautiful 16 millimeter uh, widescreen transfer. And that is alone worth the price of this disc. But that's never where it stops with Fun City because we've got a lot of great um, features here. Uh, we start with designing a character, a newly filmed video interview with director Daisy Von Schurler Meyer, Mayer. And this is a really great conversation. Um, it's about 35 minutes. Uh, Daisy Von Schurler Mayer, um, this is her debut feature. She would go on to do Woo and Madeline and then in 1998. And then she starts doing TV um, and she hits... She has an incredible career as a TV director, working on shows from Mad Men, Nurse Jackie, Shameless, Orange is the New Black, Ray Donovan, Halt and Catch Fire, The Walking Dead, and Yellow Jackets, just to name a few. Um, and then, you know, she's got such humble beginnings with this wonderful uh, comedy. She casts her own mother as the librarian aunt against Parker Posey and it's an inspired choice. Her mother is so great as this sort of prim and proper uh, librarian character and she plays off Parker so well. Um, but anyway, so this interview, um, 35 minutes. It's a great interview. She goes through her background, growing up with showbiz parents, talks about all the influences from Paris is Burning to Powell and Pressburger that, you know, come through on this film. Um inspirations for the characters in the script responses to the script when she was putting it out there which you know we're often like how can we make this movie this character so unlikable etc cetera, etc cetera. um parker bringing some of her own wardrobe for the character and i think that is part of what makes this uh a well-remembered film it's the soundtrack and the parker posey performance and the style that this character has is so specific and so unique that it really stands out. Uh, she talks about um, Parker saying she was going with a Bill Murray vibe for the character, which I think is fascinating. Um, but there's a lot of great stuff in that interview. Highly worth your time. And uh, my favorite feature on this disc. Now, we also have a 24-minute... Uh, interview with Parker Posey herself um, and uh, that is very interesting um, she seems like maybe she doesn't remember the movie as well as I would have liked but she definitely has some interesting stories and memories of the film and uh, it's it's just great to see her again I just love her as an actor and she is as charming as ever in this 24 minute interview that we get. Um, so on top of that, we also get DJing the picture, a newly filmed video interview with music supervisor, Bill Coleman and uh, power to the librarians, a newly filmed video interview with co-writer and co-producer Harry Brickmeyer, as well as uh, image gallery, theatrical trailer, a newly recorded audio commentary by writer, Jake Fogelnest, who is a huge fan of this film and who apparently lived in the neighborhood where it was filmed. So he has a lot to say about that and is just a big cult movie guy. So a good choice uh, for the commentary. And then a booklet with a new essay by DJ and writer uh, Margaret Barton Fumo, which I will uh, read briefly from. Here is the nice booklet that we get. Um, it's midway through Daisy Von Schurlemeyer's party girl and our lead Mary has just spurned her love interest Mustafa. She recently made a breakthrough at her library job by conquering the Dewey Decimal System, unintentionally leaving Mustafa in the dust. 
After spending time flirting at his falafel stand, engaging in small talk, and placing the same order over and over again, Mary's now back at square one, having stood up Mustafa for their first date. Chanel's optimistic, I'll keep coming back, plays on the soundtrack over a montage of Mary returning to the falafel cart every day, chiding Mustafa with her regular order. Can I have a falafel with hot sauce, a cider of order of baba ganoush, and a seltzer, please? Every day brings a new wild outfit, and sometimes Mary sits across from her love interest uh, and stares at him while she eats her falafel, quietly terrorizing him in her, with her presence. She recites her food order like an incantation or a love spell, but ultimately Mustafa finds it all very annoying. Her daily trip to the falafel cart is now reminiscent of Sisyphus's arduous slog up the mountain, a story that Mount Mary recently learned from Mustafa and quickly took to heart. In order to break free from her Sisyphean slump, uh, Mary has to tone down her own self-absorption and start listening to other people instead of constantly barking out orders. A persistent falafel order alone isn't going to get Mustafa back. There's something to be said, uh, however, for the power of repetition in Party Girl as a fun, hypnotic, and driving force. It also happens to provide the backbone of the energetic dance music that pulses through throughout the film keeping the rom-com at play with an uplifting beat. The soundtrack is a masterwork of 90s dance tracks, essentially eccentrically uh, compiled by the multi-talented music supervisor, DJ, producer, and renaissance man Bill Coleman, also known as the creative force behind the Brooklyn-based music company uh, Peace Biscuit. Drawing tracks from many different subgenres with dance music, Coleman helped director Daisy Von Schurler-Mayer... Uh, paint a picture of a downtown club scene that was bumping and thriving in New York City in 1995. Anyway, that's just the beginning paragraphs of that essay, which I very much enjoyed and which I recommend you checking out. And so, like I said, the film is a combination of, you know, a great performance, a really neat script, great influences, great style, great music. And so you can see why it ends up catching on in the video era in the 1990s and why Parker Posey becomes um, a star. You know, it's it's truly one of those movies that just really, like I said, establishes someone. And so a great choice, again, from Fun City, who has a track record of great choices. But um, this one is highly recommended and uh, worth picking up from your local online retailers. Um, so that's Party Girl from 1995. Moving on, <clears throat> we have, as I mentioned, an old video store favorite of mine. This is The Grand Tour. And this film is from uh, 1992, I want to say. Um, and it is really a neat movie that... Uh, has stuck with me for a long time. It's one of those that you discover at your video store. Uh, it's also known as Timescape and also known as Grand Tour, A Disaster in Time. I think that's the title that it had when I saw it on VHS. It is uh, adapted and directed by David Twoey, who would go on to do such sci-fi and horror uh films as Pitch Black, and then he would do all the Riddick movies, uh, The Arrival, uh, Below, which is a really interesting haunted sub-movie, and Perfect Getaway, which is just kind of a great neo-noir thing. But um, So this film stars Jeff Daniels and his daughter, played by Ariana Richards, who uh, is the little girl from Jurassic Park. And this is a year or so before she would do that film. But she's immediately compelling in this. She's a great um, character to play opposite Jeff Daniels, who's really good in this. Um, so this is set in a small uh, you know, East Coast area town. Um, and it... I'm, I'm always tr sort of trying to decide how much to give away. Um, I'll just go with what the back says. Uh, apologies for any spoilers here, but a widowed innkeeper battles a band of disaster groupies from the future with 
uh, explosive results. Ben Wilson and his daughter uh, buy an old Victorian mansion and begin renovations with plans to open up an inn. Their first guests are a strange and mysterious covey of tourists led by an eccentric Madame Levine. Uh, in an emotionally charged and a suspenseful race against time, Ben must battle the seductive time bandits as well as his own personal demons in an attempt to save his daughter and the town, etc., etc. Okay, <clears throat> so that gives away a lot, but I don't think it makes the movie any less compelling uh, to know that it is a time travel movie and the opening features uh, a flashback to Jeff Daniels losing his wife in a freak accident with uh, his, their car on a snowy road and a horse-drawn carriage that they almost collide with coming out of a covered bridge. And the horse begins to rear up and starts kicking the windshield of the car and apparently kicks his wife in the face, maybe to death, as he runs to get help or something. Um, so he's haunted by this nightmare of losing his wife. And he and his daughter have bought this old inn. They're fixing it up. These weird people show up. Pretty quickly, it becomes apparent they are not from our time and that they are there to witness some kind of uh, epic event. And they have a specific way that they time travel. And I won't go into that. But uh, that is something that Je the Jeff Daniels character has to sort of figure out in order to maybe um, let let the events play out or not in a way that serves him and his family best. We'll put it like that. But it's a really fascinating movie, a great Twilight Zone episode turned film. You know, often those don't always sustain the full feature length, but this one definitely does and has some really great time travel stuff in it. Uh, that is low key, you know, in terms of what's happening. But it, you know, it feels like, you know, Harlan Ellison or something along those lines. Just a really fascinating time travel story with a great Jeff Daniels performance at the center of it and a great relationship between him and Ariana Richards as his daughter. Uh, I just love this movie. It's a, it's a big old favorite from the video store days. It's getting its Blu-ray debut. It looks wonderful. Um, the features are a little sparse. You get uh, Timescape alternate title sequence, the Lost the Time can promo, production stills, poster mock-up, and uh, artwork gallery trailers, etc. I would have loved maybe an interview or something, but I know that that's not as easy to do. Here is the um, original artwork that I remember seeing. Uh, this is also what the Timescape artwork looks like. And, um, yeah, it's just one of those movies from the 90s that I discovered at the video store when I was working there that I almost would have passed over, except I was was and still am a really big Jeff Daniels fan. And so I was like, oh, let's give this one a look. And it ended up being a real gem and a movie that I haven't honestly thought about for a little while. So when this Blu-ray was announced, I was very excited and very happy to come back to it. Uh, so it's a big, big recommend for me, and uh, definitely if you're into time travel, time bounce, or whatever kind of movies, this is a gem that's been, I think, hidden over time because um, I don't know if it was originally done for cable or what it was, but I don't know how much of a big release it got outside of VHS and then an Anchor Bay DVD that came out some years later. So anyway... Uh, the Grand Tour, definitely worth your time, definitely worth picking up if you're a sci-fi time travel movie junkie like I am and you like Jeff Daniels. Uh, anyway, that will do it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.